First up tonight we have Jeff Larch. Uh, Jeff is going to be presenting on Buster Keaton. His title is Buster Keaton Won't Shut Up, Asylum Film, Comic Geniuses, Continuing Influence on All Things Film and Funny. Uh, Jeff is a leader of a web development company called EC Connection. He is an amateur film critic. And if you're interested in pursuing his ideas further uh, after tonight, check out his blog, digitalsolid.com. Please give a hand for Jeff Larch. Thank you, Kate. So, Quentin Tarantino, the director of last year's Death Proof, he, um, he proved that hiring a really good stunt actor makes it done. This is Zoe uh, Miller. She did an amazing job in this film. And 80 years earlier, the director, Buster Keaton, recognized the same thing. What Buster did was he cast himself because he was the best stunt actor he could find. And he did it for comedy as opposed to Quentin Tarantino's doing it to thrill people. And he succeeded, even to today. Uh, I was at a uh, Milwaukee Art Museum presentation of one of Buster Keaton's films. I heard people every evening see hysterical laughter at, at sequences like this where he runs in front of a house, the house is in a windstorm, the facade of it comes crashing down around his ankles, the only thing that saves him is the window that uh, he has hit his mark and hit. Uh, this is, looks scary. Uh, he didn't do it with any sort of uh, anything. Uh, this also was, uh, there were no pigs, nothing digital. Uh, this is Buster Keaton catching a car. He literally reaches out, grabs a speeding car, it pulls him off of the screen, as you can see in the lower right hand corner, and pulls him horizontal. It, it looks like it's, it's killing him, and he, he, was, he wasn't hurt. Uh, and the reason was, it was a habit from childhood. That's him on the right, about five years old, with the three Keatons in vaudeville, that's his dad and mom, and the whole act was his dad throwing him around, mopping the floor with him, basically horrifying the audience. They think that he's killed him. In fact, he was invited to appear in front of a lot of judges. He was asked to disrobe in front of uh, child welfare judges who were concerned that he really was hurt. He had to show that he didn't have any bruises or cuts. So he learned comedy when he was young. He also learned stunts when he was young. He learned filmmaking at the side of this amazing filmmaker called Fatty Arbuckle, who no one knows about today, but was a brilliant comic. That's him on the left, and of course, Buster's in the middle. Fatty taught him the, to translate comedy for film, and Buster took it and also fell in love with the machinery of film. And he became an innovator of films. He would spend his spare time taking apart cameras. Uh, unfortunately, Fatty spent his spare time partying and one three-day party ended with a woman being killed. She, she died of complications from a burst bladder. Uh, Fatty was brought to trial, and uh, he was accused, the, the rumors were, that uh, she was injured, <laughs> injured by having sex with her during this party. Uh, he was acquitted, but his, his career was destroyed. And get this, decades before OJ, the newspapers called him the trial of the century. Luckily, Buster never found himself in front of a court, except on film. He always played the same sort of character. He was always a sad sack character, uh, a loner who tried to get the girl and never succeeded. Very similar to the echoes that we see in a lot of modern filmmakers, or not too distant past filmmakers like Woody Allen. Um, and this face that he had was called the Great Stone Face. Uh, and it's actually been referred to John Stewart in the New York Times last week, I kid you not, in an interview said that one of his looks he gets from Buster Keaton. He said, when I need to respond to a particularly egregious news story, I ask myself, quote unquote, what would Buster Keaton do? <laughs> so uh, Buster was a film innovator. He literally came up with amazing special effects because he wanted to make better comedy. Very similar to the film innovation of people like Ingmar Bergman, and you know, also Orson Welles and Woody Allen, some of the others who, who really got their hands in every piece of the pie. Um, and Woody Allen has a particular trip, uh, debt to pay to uh, Keaton for a 1980s film where he not only stole some, well, he didn't steal, but he borrowed some plot devices and also a special effect. 
the plot device had to do with this very inclusive character who was losing herself in films. She couldn't stand her life, so she was in a movie theater, and she found herself in her delusions, um, thinking that the people on the screen were talking to her. So she, would, she thought she was invited up, she would run into the screen, and magically she joined the action. It was done with a mad effect that Buster Keaton had, had created about 60 years earlier, and actually used in a very similar film called Sherlock Jr. Uh, so that's uh, a case of, of, of playful lifting. Pure plagiarism <laughs> comes with uh, this next film that you'll see, which is a more recent film. It stars Renee Zellweger and Chris O'Donnell. And the film is uh, The Bachelor. And you might have seen it. It was a flop. But, uh, but that scene, that key scene, is this guy running from a bunch of brides. The whole plot is that uh, Chris O'Donnell needs to marry because his uncle has left millions of dollars to him in a will as long as he does become married by a certain deadline. So, of course, you know, uh, frivolity ensues, and he finds himself not finding the right bride. Word leaks, he's asleep on a church pew. Suddenly he wakes up and he's surrounded by all these single New York women who want desperately to marry him and get the money. Funny thing. Uh, very, very early, <laughs> Seven Chances, Buster Keaton, exactly the same storyline, exactly the same scenes, including the surrealism of him being chased down the street by all of the brides. The surrealism of Buster Keaton is actually what is preserved here. People protected him not for the laughs, but because he was an amazing artist, even though he didn't realize it. Um, this is uh, one of the films that he influenced uh, by Louis Fuenel and uh, uh, Salvador Dali. Revolting film, by the way. You don't want to see it. But, but, uh, but they, they cited Buster Keaton as an influence. Uh, likewise, another influence is none other than Samuel Beckett, the playwright. Waiting for Godot was written with one of the characters casting Buster Keaton. Buster Keaton was invited to actually act in the film. He read the script, couldn't understand it. He declined. <laughs> and it really just echoes his whole career because he said, all I've ever wanted to do is to make people laugh. Thank you. Thank you.